Hey folks, I wanted to post this quick video to share some of our newer results with the real-time wireless skin conductance monitoring. Patients wear a little wrist strap with a sensor in it doing the full course of imaginal exposures each week. We've only run a handful of patients so far with the new technology, uh, but the clarity and consistency of the results is surprising. We've prepared these first few example summary graphs and there'll be more on the way. But you can see here a consistent stepwise declines in objectively measured arousal in consecutive weeks of imaginal exposures. This patient was very engaged early on and experienced a fair amount of distress during the exposures. I think it was particularly helpful for him to see these ongoing results because by the third exposure they didn't seem to be getting any easier for him. But he saw this graph and it clearly showed that his physiological arousal was declining even if he hadn't noticed it getting any easier yet. He stuck with it and each session the intercept was lower and lower until he started feeling better. Um, you can note that we're not seeing any within session habituation, but regardless, extinction is occurring between sessions. Because the sensor is time marked, if you keep good notes during your sessions and stay on your five minute markers, it's relatively easy to match up session notes to the physiological data. If you look at the third session here, the pink line, that first spike up at around 15 minutes was ground zero for this patient's most intrusive memory. And very interestingly, the big spike in arousal around 27 minutes coincides exactly with a reclaimed memory, or in other words, a salient detail from the trauma that had not been remembered until the exposures provided a chance to approach the whole memory. Reclaimed memories are a common event in exposure therapy for PTSD. However, linking them to spikes in actual physiological arousal is a new finding. The mechanisms of reclaimed memories are not well understood, but in practice, they are positive prognostic indicators that emotional processing is going on. For these next two cases, we actually see increases in arousal within the course of each individual exposure, but again, fairly dramatic drops in arousal between the sessions. Pointing out this measurable and visible progress to patients seems to help them believe that the treatment will work for them, even if they still feel considerably distressed early on. The existing literature on psychophysiological measurement in PTSD might suggest that finding such consistently measurable and stepwise decreases in arousal would be difficult, partially based on documented discordance between objective and subjective measures of anxiety. However, this new paradigm suggests that regardless of subjective ratings, decreases in physiological distress with each session are easy to show and are heartening for patients to see. And here are the similar results for patient 3. Besides potential improvements in the new technologies that we're using today for measurement, one reason for these robust findings that have not been previously reported may be that the vast majority of what we know about measuring physiological arousal and PTSD during exposure to trauma-specific cues comes from laboratory studies that construct three to five minute trauma probes as standardized stimuli. Measuring psychophysiology during actual 40 to 60 minute exposures as part of a validated, effective, and replicable treatment paradigm is a new technique. There's nothing particularly groundbreaking about employing the paradigm, it's just that folks haven't taken the time to do it before, or perhaps many were discouraged by results from earlier attempts using trauma probes. For sure, wireless monitoring technology makes bringing applied psychophysiology into the therapy room a lot easier, and these results should be fairly easy to replicate if they're not a fluke. Besides apparently providing positive reinforcement to patients to keep coming back for the treatment, the paradigm also seems to be a pretty powerful tool for shedding light on concordance between objective and subjective ratings of distress. Lab-based studies regarding the correlation of objective and subjective measures of distress often show that discordance, rather than concordance, is typically the rule. However, again, many of these studies use baseline-only measurements or pre-post design with time-limited trauma probes or other short-duration stimuli. When we take the time to continually measure objective and subjective ratings of distress concurrently over an amassed exposure treatment paradigm, interesting outcomes are revealed. Some patients show a strong relationship between objective and subjective measures of distress, but A, we wouldn't have found it with just three to five minutes of measurement, and B, the correlation is low unless the data series are time lagged. When skin conductance and subjective arousal ratings are plotted together over 50 minutes for this patient, you can clearly see a pattern that would not be so clear if limited to any five minute section. And running a correlation on these measures would yield an insignificant correlation coefficient of 0.06. But when we time lag the data series by 5 minutes, the correlation goes up to 0.55. If we stagger it, 
to 10 minute laps, the correlation is highly significant at 0 0.90. Other patients showed discordance over the entire initial 50 minutes of exposure, which is similar to lab studies using 3 to 5 minute trauma probes, but by session 8, the same patient now has extraordinarily high concordance. We do not know if this is due to a practice effect or if concordance improves in some patients as anxiety drops or both. Clearly, either of these potential explanations would have implications for the innovation or individualization of exposure therapy protocols. One of the reasons we're pretty excited about the issues raised in the findings presented here is that these outcomes are really not the result of alpha inflation. We didn't handpick just the good graphs out of dozens and dozens to show a point. These are just the consecutive outcomes of the first three patients who got to go through the real-time monitoring paradigm. We have similar results for the next few patients as well, but haven't had time to create and post the actual microsemen feed overlays. But in these graphs, here you can see the skin conductance results averaged over five-minute intervals with a similar stepwise reduction in arousal on consecutive weekly exposures. Thanks for your time, and if you have any questions about how you can start using real-time wireless skin conductance monitoring in your clinic, feel free to drop me a line at turk at m-u-s-c dot e-d-u. That's t-u-e-r-k at m-u-s-c dot e-d-u. Have a good day.